Okay, this video is to uh, document a, uh, another upgrade to this uh, little shortwave receiver kit that I have. Is that Tentec uh, 1254. I did a couple of uh, videos to, uh, with this receiver walking through the signal path of it and uh, also uh, a pair of videos showing how I added this little uh, S-meter to it. So, uh, searching around the internet I found a guy who makes a, an upgrade kit for it. Uh, and he's got two versions of it. This is the instructions for it. And there's the guy's uh, website there. Let's see if we can get that focused in there. So uh, it's www.cholakian.com slash tt125upgrade.html. But um, what it does is he upgrades the, the microprocessor that controls the PLL in here. Um, and because the one that's in there is kind of limited. And uh, some of the areas are, uh, for example, when you're in, say, AM mode, uh, you can see it basically tunes in 5 kilohertz steps, which is okay typically for AM, but really if you're in single sideband mode for a single sideband in CW, it only tunes in 2.5 kilohertz steps. That's the finest it'll go. And you've got to use this clarifier control here to kind of span you know, anything in between you know, the 2.5 kilohertz steps that, uh, that we can tune to. So this, uh, this kit, among other things, allows you to change uh, the tuning rate to a number of different tuning steps. It also increases the number of memories you have dramatically, it eliminates the 9 volt battery internally, and um, a couple of other nice things. And it sells two versions. One is a basic kit to kind of just update the tuning capability and some of those other features that I mentioned. And another full kit that adds full uh, programmability, uh, where it adds a serial port or even a USB port to control the receiver uh, remotely. So, but anyway, the, the update is actually pretty easy. Uh, the basic kit is the only one that I have. is just for essentially replacing the uh, microcontroller that's in there with this upgraded version here. So I'll just show you the update of that. The, the kit also includes a, an LED that you can add that actually would sit right in, in the front panel right between the AM and single sideband mode LEDs and that's used for some of the, uh, the mode uh, setups that you can do but I'm not going to put that in. Uh, at least not right now. So, uh, but the upgrade is really easy. Uh, we'll basically shut the unit off. I'm going to pull the power out of the back of it. I've already taken uh, the screws out of the case here, so I can just uh, pull the case apart here, top and bottom. Okay. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the battery because that's not going to be needed anymore. So, uh, I'll just uh, lift this up. I've taken the screw out here so I can tilt this up. Uh, we can see, uh, you know, there's the 9 volt battery. Here's the the little circuit board for my little uh, S-meter kit that I added in here. What I'm going to do is just go in here and unsolder uh, these wires for the 9 volt battery since we don't need that anymore. It'll just be nice and, nice and easy here to yank that out. There's number one and yank out number two. Voila! 9 volt battery is out. Okay. And uh, in fact we can take a little little knife here and cut the tape that's holding this battery in place and we're good to go it's removing the battery okay so that is out of here okay now let's see tilt this back I can uh, pull the rest of this tape off of here there we go okay so that part of the, the modification is done we just fold that back over and then uh, we turn this back over this way. Here's the uh, the microprocessor we're going to pull out and replace. So it's just uh, pulling that uh, microcontroller out. And uh, got a nifty little tool that we can uh, use for that. Okay, just uh, grab the end of it with this guy and, and gently rock it out of here. Okay, there we go. So we'll take him, and I'm going to stick him right on the, the other side of the anesthetic phone here. And uh, now I can pull this guy out and stick him right in that same place. So just line up all the holes and gently rock him into place. So there we go. So that's the upgrade. <laughs> so it's as simple as that and we should just be able to throw the uh, power back into this thing. And now when we power it up, okay, so powers up, it's at 15 megahertz when it first starts up here, and we can see as we tune along in the AM mode it's still tuning on 5 kilohertz steps, 
Okay, but if I hit the speed button now, now I can actually adjust the tuning rate all the way down to 10 hertz or all the way up to 100 kilohertz. And once I do that, now let's see, at 100 kilohertz steps, we could actually see the fast LED is on like it was before. Okay, if I say scoot down to, you know, say the 75 meter band, I can hit the speed button, I can dial the tuning rate down here. Let's dial the tuning rate to say 1 kilohertz. And now when I dial through here, I can see I'm actually tuning in 1 kilohertz steps. Okay. If I dial the tuning rate down to 100 hertz, I can see I'm dialing now in 100 hertz steps. So, pretty cool. It uh, does exactly what it's supposed to. So, a couple of other neat little features here that you can do. Um, uh, and we'll go play with some of those features. In terms of uh, when you first turn the unit on, for two minutes, for two seconds, you can hit the mode key which brings you into a couple of different modes and I think the speed key here let's see I remember how to do this I, I read it once let's see if we turn that on hit the mode key and hit the speed key I can rotate the speed and tell it how long that's how long I want the display to stay on so what this should do now is after I finish tuning after a few seconds the display shuts off and the reason you might want that is that uh, on some bands the uh, the display actually, or the multiplexing of the display, causes some noise in the uh, in the receiver. So I'm going to have to do some experiments with that to see if that uh, how bad that really is affecting mine. So I'm just going to turn this back to. Uh, let's see. Let's let's go do that uh, one more time here and turn the uh, display speed back down. So I'm going to switch that down to speed. We'll go back to zero so that it stays on. And uh, and now I've got uh, my tuning right here. I can go play with this and uh, see how well that works. But anyway, that's a, a real quick uh, video to show how quick and easy it is to do that installation. Uh, you know what, let's, uh, let's throw the antenna on here just to see what, uh, what we hear. Let's see, throw the antenna back on there. I'll put the baffle on the top here because the speaker really sounds lousy without that, so we'll throw that back on the top. Now let's throw this on here, turn the volume up. Okay, and now as I tune my way through, Let's see, let's turn our speed up a little bit, say to one kilohertz, so we find something to listen to. Much easier to tune that in, the clarifier won't have to go as far anymore, so pretty cool. So let's see how much of this noise I'm getting is due to the display. So I'm going to turn this on, hit mode and speed. And let's turn it to, to turn the display off after one second. So in this case, I can see the noise really didn't change much as I'm tuning. So I don't I don't hear a big change in the dis, in the noise and things like that with the display. So I think I'm going to leave the display on all the time. Turn it on. Hit mode and speed. Turn that back to zero. So now I'll just have the display on all the time. Anyway, so uh, that's the quick update, and uh, looks like a pretty successful thing and uh, pretty inexpensive and, and pretty cool to do. Anyway, that's the uh, the installation of this uh, this neat little kit, and I'll uh, I'll put a link to it in a note there on the video in case anybody's interested in that. So, but uh, fun little upgrade for this little receiver.